The total U.S. supply of available unsold new vehicles climbs to 2.21 million units, the highest level since spring 2021. Woohoo! Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the longest running car buyer's advocate on YouTube known as the Homework Guy. I'm joined today by the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal, who has been along with me for the ride since day one in the car business. Besides this awesome report, we've got some negotiation tips for you along the way. We hope to give you enough value today that you newbies subscribe and all of you feel inclined to smack that like button before the show is over. This is indeed awesome news for car buyers. 2.21 million units in inventory despite outstanding recent sales paces by most car manufacturers. This is a level that is 60% higher than the same time a year ago. Inventory numbers include vehicles available on dealer lots with some of it still being in transit. The complete stats right now with new unsold inventory sitting at 2.21 million gives the market a 60-day supply average of cars at an average selling price of $47,397. The last time we saw a 60-day supply was March 2021, so it's been a while. Yeah. However, in January of 2021, the average selling price of a new vehicle was at $40,857, an unwelcome bump of $6,540 over the last 32 months. For a pre-pandemic comparison, in January 2020, it was at 37,851. That's a jump of 9,546 bucks to our current market over the last 44 months. The cost difference does not include the increased possibility of excessive dealer fees and forced add-ons that we frequently warn you guys about. With the day's supply being averaged at 60 days, you might ask, where does it put things for the specific brand that you are interested in? Well, Cox Automotive has helped us out with that information too. This chart shows Honda and Toyota are at 30 and 33 days supply. That's the low water mark right now in the industry. But Ki getting better all the time. Right. Kia is at 35 days. Subaru, 45 days. Lexus and Cadillac, both at 46 days supply. Land Rover, Hyundai, and Chevrolet are sitting at 54, 56, and 57 days, respectively. Mercedes is right at the national average of 60 days. Acura, 62 days. BMW, Volkswagen, and GMC all bunched in at 63 days. Nissan, Audi, Mazda, Porsche, Mitsubishi, and Genesis all sitting at very healthy levels at 70, 71, 73, 74, 76, and 77 days, respectively. That's awesome. All of these brands are ripe for great car deals, friends. Just do a bit of hardcore negotiating. Buick is up to 82 days, Ford is at an 88-day supply, Mini comes in at 95 days, and here's where things get really serious. Jeep, 103 days, Ram and Volvo, 108 days, Infiniti, 113 days. Infiniti does very well in reliability rankings and value retention with excellent safety ratings. MSRP for a QX50 starting at $40,300. Lincoln sits at 124 days. Chrysler 127 days, and Dodge topping everyone at 142 days supply. It's no wonder that many of the at-invoice deals with plenty of rebates that we keep seeing are Dodge vehicles. They have a ton of vehicles. All right, here's a little more analysis on the inventory levels. Chevrolet at 57 days supply and Cadillac at 46 have supply levels below the industry average. They have the lowest supply of all domestic brands going into the UAW strike and are being squeezed further as the strike progresses. That's something to keep an eye on. They are the only two domestic brands with below average inventory. Of GM's other brands, Buick has the most stock at 82 days supply. GMC at 63 is also above the national average. More importantly, the Chevrolet and Cadillac models that are in the tightest supply are its most popular ones and in many cases, the biggest profit generators for the company. Right. Chevy's volume leader, the hefty profit-producing Chevy Silverado pickup truck, had a decent-sized inventory at 90-day supply at the start of October, the kickoff into what is normally the busiest selling season for full-size pickup trucks, the fourth quarter. The Silverado Heavy Duty, however, had a low supply. The Chevy Corvette, for you Corvette lovers out there, had the lowest day supply among GM models at just a 23-day supply. The Chevrolet Tahoe and Suburban, which also generate huge profits for GM, had inventory under 30-day supply. Likewise, the Cadillac Escalade models had only a 30-day supply. And Chevy Traverse SUV, which had its Lansing, Michigan production site added to the list of strike targets on September 29, had a 55-day supply. However, the Buick Enclave, also built at the plant, had a beefy 141-day supply. No worries about Enclave shortages anytime soon. The mid-sized Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon pickups, which were just revamped and were in launch mode when the strike started, had just a 29-day supply. The Wentzville, Missouri plant where the pickups are made is on strike. 
This plant also makes GM's cargo vans, which have average to below average supply depending on the model. The Chevy Trax, just revamped and priced attractively in the mid-20,000s, is in tight supply at 33 days due to its popularity and fresh launch. However, it is not affected by the strike as it is currently made offshore in South Korea. There you go. Over at Stellantis, they have plenty of supply to weather the strike. As has been the case all year, Stellantis brands had the heftiest supply of not only the Detroit automakers, but of all brands, suggesting it can best weather the UAW strike. Stellantis's four volume brands have days supply in the triple digits. Dodge and Chrysler have the highest days supply of all brands, luxury and non-luxury, at 142 days and 127 days. Those brands, along with Ram at 108 and Jeep at 103, had the highest day supply for non-luxury brands. The strike has made barely a dent in inventory for Jeep models produced at the Toledo, Ohio plant, which makes them and is involved in the strike. The Jeep Wrangler and Gladiator have day supply of 77 and 116 days, respectively. So friends, if you're fans of these vehicles, you should disregard any strike concerns and get very tough with your negotiations. That's right. Ford does have some shortages, but Lincoln is just swimming in inventory. Ford Motor Company's inventory levels vary widely depending on make and model. Ford's Lincoln brand has the highest day supply at 124 days of all luxury brands. Ford brand is at 88 day supply. The all-important F-150 had 97 day supply at the start of October. The Ford Explorer had the beefiest inventory of any of the top 30 selling models with 119 day supply. Last Friday, the UAW struck the Chicago plant that produces the Explorer and the Lincoln Aviator, which has a whopping 256 days <laughs> supply. 256 days, wow. Even without a strike, this plant needs to be shut down. That's right. The plant also produces Ford's police vehicles, which are in the low supply category. Workers are also on strike at the Ford Wayne Assembly Plant in Michigan that makes the Bronco and Ranger. The popular Bronco had its supply drop to 45 days, and the Ranger is at 33. The Made in Mexico Maverick is perpetually in low supply and has just a 32-day supply. The most affordably priced pickup from Ford, it has been a hit with buyers since it launched in the second half of 2021. Aside from these few shortages, Ford has ample stock of the other models, including the Escape and Bronco Sport. Some models have day supply in the triple digits. While many of the Asian brands have been experiencing a nice sales bump, as we recently reported, Low import inventory across the board is preventing a major capitalization opportunity on the UAW strike. Naturally, you would think the UAW strike against the Detroit automakers could have allowed competitors to grab sales and market share. However, competitors do have tight inventory. As Liz shared, Honda, Toyota, Kia, Subaru, and Hyundai have the lowest supply among non-luxury brands. Of luxury brands, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Acura have the lowest. Eight of the top selling 30 models with the lowest supply are Asian imports, specifically from Toyota, Honda, and Kia. At the very bottom are the Honda CRV and its hybrid version, the new Toyota Grand Highlander, and the Toyota Corolla. Eight of the top selling 30 models with the highest inventory are domestic trucks and SUVs, led by the Ram 1500 at 119 days supply. Average new vehicle price took a dip too. The average listing price or asking price bounced around a bit throughout September. At the start of October, it was $60 lower than a month earlier, so no cause for celebration just <laughs> yet. The average listing price of $47,397 was 3% above the same time a year ago. Nothing was made up or hyped for clicks in this show today, friends. The data comes from an outstanding report put together by Michelle Krebs, an automotive analyst and award-winning writer with over 35 years of experience covering the global auto industry. She has spent the last eight years providing analysis and insights on the auto industry, drawing from a treasure trove of consumer and industry data from Cox Automotive and its brands, including Auto Trader and Kelly Blue Book. Friends, if you're overly hungry for a car deal right now and you want one sooner than later, not only is the inventory at a really healthy level right now, and they are steadily climbing, which totally works in your favor. Add to that, we are also in the fourth quarter of the year. I've said this before, but dealers make or break themselves on how they do this time of year. None of them can afford to finish on a bad note. Right now, with economic uncertainty on the horizon, they need every buyer who comes along, and that includes you. So use this knowledge of inventory to your advantage. Take some time, play the game with some dealers, shop outside your area if the dealers are ridiculous near you, and get more than a couple of them involved, and pit them against each other, and you might be very happy with what happens. The hungriest of the bunch will step up and make you an offer you are unlikely to say no to. The bottom line is, do your homework and strategize your moves. 
Visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, and take advantage of our free resources for car buyers. Look through our menu of videos and watch any titles that you think apply to you the most. You hear us talk all the time about love and fake fees a lot, so make sure you don't miss that one. If you're a cash buyer, see this video title, Don't Say I'm Paying Cash, with me and Elizabeth. Also, if you're a cash buyer, make sure you contact the dealer beforehand and ask this question. If I make a substantial down payment on an upcoming possible car deal at your dealership, can I write a personal check for that? There's a very important reason that you'd ask this question, isn't there, Kevin? Yes, most definitely. If the dealer says yes to this question, yes, you can write a personal check for a substantial down payment. Well, you can also rest assured that the dealership will accept a personal check for the entire purchase too, if you decide to go that route. Now you have the green light to just write a personal check and you don't have to go to the bank and get a certified check in advance. Even if the dealer says, well, we'll have to wait a couple of days to make sure the check clears. No problem. Just go back a few days later and pick up your car. Right. Also, don't spill the beans early if you intend to pay cash. Instead, we recommend you say, I'll be interested in what the finance office has to offer if we can come to an agreement on total price. Even if you plan to pay cash, wouldn't you be interested in knowing if the finance office had a 0% financing deal to offer you? Of course you would. By the way, anyone wishing to show us some love with a small donation for producing great videos for you on YouTube, you can find a link in the description box for our nonprofit charity we started to help children. That's where we'd like to see your support. Give sendgo.com slash Williston Kids first. Help support our mission to help children. And right here, courtesy of the Homework Guide team in our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. If you just recently joined the Homework Guide channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal, the Homework Guy team is serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.